the first snow of winter arrives, and with it, the urgent need for warmer clothing. Until now, the colonists have made do with clothing recovered from raiders, but they'll need to hunt wild game for leather now. Megasloth leather is one of the best available, but its value is matched evenly with the danger of the living creature itself. Despite her mild clawing by the Megasloth, Orbrox gets to work sewing some seasonal parkas to keep everyone warm. After having to expand the workshop to accommodate its bulk, a fabrication table is finally completed, allowing the colony to manufacture even the most advanced of circuits. The toll of all the human corpses on colonists' morale is getting to be overwhelming, so at long last it's time for a crematorium. The rising costs of heating in the winter are taxing the power supply, even with the hydroelectric generator working at full tilt. Power usage is lower at night, so a larger battery will help to store whatever excess is generated. The Aurea dynasty requests that the colony take care of a pair of squirrels, Elisa and Huck, which, though a strange task, is more than feasible, and the colony can't afford to make enemies right now. This is not to say that all are happy with the presence of two new furry friends. For Lottie, it's a waiting game. The Brain orders the wood-fired generator to be upgraded. It's a desperate effort to ensure reliable power, but luckily it's more than enough. And an expansion of the living areas is long overdue. The first thing needed is a bedroom for Orbux. Perhaps drawn by the sounds of work or the warmth within, a lone lynx stalks near to the colony, and sets its sights on Lottie. Though Grey is able to wrestle it away, Lottie is severely injured. Lottie receives the best medical care the colony can provide, and she even gets visitors while she rests. An elderly orc by the name of Runug has crash-landed nearby. His cataracts and carcinoma make him all but worthless to the colony, but helping him might ingratiate the colony to his peers. He swiftly recovers and decides to head on his way, though curiously has trouble finding his way out of the colony. Soon enough, Lottie is back on her feet. With bedrooms developing, the brain takes the opportunity to relocate into its new space in the former crypt. Orbix's new bedroom also takes shape, and he can finally get some much-deserved rest. Appearing from the wilderness, a hobgoblin named Zrakvizog elects to join the colony. His presence is awkward, but his crafting ability will come in useful in short order. Renug remains in the generator room. It's Lottie's worst nightmare, as Lisa is discovered to be pregnant, which means more usurpers to her furry throne. The day ends as Renug decides once again to leave, but starves in the generator room, having never been able to so much as find the door. Life on the Rim is indeed sometimes just as bizarre as the people living here. Also, only a small percentage of viewers are sub- <laughs> Nah, I'm just kidding, like one-fifth of you aren't subscribed. But the vast majority of you are missing out on early videos and fun bonus content on my Patreon. For as little as one pound per month, you can help keep me able to persevere through every struggle the last year has brought us, and keep you all entertained. So to lend a hand, and only if you can, head over to patreon.com slash lying.